this message I'm about to give you is the exact same message I wish I would have gotten before I started my first job. And it's something I think everyone needs to hear. As someone who has an extreme work ethic that wants to excel and just wants to make the most out of everything, I hope this speaks to you as much as it spoke to me. To be honest, I have a lot to say about this topic and I really don't know where to start. So I'm just gonna start off by saying this. For most of us, our job is our main source of income. And a lot of times it's the only source of income that we have. That gives an overwhelming reason to perform, to be the best and to move up and become somebody within whatever company you're working in. That was me. I always felt like I had something to prove. Not to anyone in particular, but to myself. And that one thing was simple. I felt like I had to prove to myself that I could do anything I set my mind to. And while that desire came from a genuine place, it absolutely backfired and almost completely destroyed my peace of mind. It all started with my first ever part-time job where I used to stock groceries. Talk about humble beginnings. I was 18 years old and I was working at this little grocery store in between semesters of college so I could pay for my books because one of my biggest pet peeves is having anyone, especially my parents, paying for something that was my responsibility. That goes back to what I just told you. I felt like I had to prove to myself that I could do something as simple as paying for my own books for college. As you can see, this started off very simple, but don't worry. As this video goes on, you'll see just how quickly this escalates. So anyway, let me tell you about the work experience I had. First of all, you should know I worked on the ghetto side of town, so you at least know this is going to be an interesting story. My work experience started off with comments, the negative kind. I guess my coworkers caught wind that I was a college kid, so that started everything off on the wrong foot from day one. So one example is I used to absolutely suck at using the pallet jacks because at the time I hadn't used one before. Like prior to that, all I ever did was pressure wash houses and mow lawns. I didn't know nothing about no pallet jacks. You know what I'm saying? So this old guy who's doing the same job I'm doing, by the way, he's walking by and he sees me struggling with this pallet jack and he just starts laughing. He's like, yeah, boy, it takes a four year degree to learn how to use one of those. I was like, yeah, all right and brushed it off. That pretty much set the tone for what I was getting myself into. Some comments got to me more than others. Like the time I heard my boss talk to his boss about me in the other aisle, like literally I was one aisle away from them and I could hear everything they were saying. And bro, you should have heard the way he was describing me. He made me sound like I was a complete idiot. Yeah, he's so slow, man. He needs to speed up. I just called him on his day off to come in and work today. Don't know why I did that. He's slowing me down already. I really don't think this guy knows what he's doing. Like, where did you get him from? You said he's in college? How? How could a guy like him possibly be in college? Yo, when you really hear how people think of you when they don't realize that you're there, when they think you can't hear every word they're saying about you, it changes your whole perspective. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that one kind of got to me because it was like there was a layer of honesty in his voice. You know what I mean? It sounded like from his perspective, I was too stupid to be working a minimum wage job, basically. I couldn't let it bother me too much though because it was just a job I was doing in between semesters so I could pay for books. That was it. So as time went on and I got better at the job, the comments continued. No matter how much I improved, no matter how much quicker I got at stocking the shelves, there was always something to comment about. We're talking about one of the most menial things you can possibly do, by the way. But, but to them, to these guys, they made it sound like it was a highly specialized skill that only they could do. Bro, I just remember hearing the grown men who worked with me snickering, giggling, whispering to each other, and I just heard snippets of it. <laughs> College kid. Uh, <laughs> he's not as fast as us. <laughs> he, he's in college. <laughs> Can't even do this job. <laughs> Like they paid so much attention to me, they made a full-time job out of it. But the kicker was this. One day I made a small mistake and I got ripped apart. Like I got yelled at and ridiculed in front of everyone. Keep making mistakes. No, no, keep, keep on making mistakes. The blank is getting old. Well, then he, then he walks off. And, Can't believe this mother blank and bull blank. Like my censorship, don't you, bro? I, I know you ain't got to tell me. I know. You know what I'm saying? I, I took it like a man and I kept it moving. I understood that I was wrong, but on the inside, I was on fire because I had never been yelled at in a professional environment before, so I didn't know how to handle it. I just know how I would have handled it outside of work. Then you know what happened 30 minutes later? Bruh pulled me to the side and asked me a question that made me reconsider this entire situation. You want to know what that question was? Hey, Reggie, 
Yeah. Can you take me home? No. Said it cold, too. And I'm thinking to myself, so the same person who just yelled at me and practically threatened my job in front of everyone is now asking me for a ride home. Hmm. Almost as if he didn't just disrespect me like 30 minutes ago in front of everyone. At that moment, I realized that over the course of the time that I worked there, I was slowly starting to forget something that was extremely important. I started to forget who I was. I was more than a stalker and I was more than a college kid. Above all else, I was a responsible adult doing what I needed to do to not end up in the same situation as this 40 plus year old man angry at the world, taking it out at the new kid at work just because he defines himself by his job. Bruh didn't have a car. Bruh didn't have no teeth. I would have been mad too. But I had to ask myself this question. Do the comments get to you because there's some truth to them? Or do they get to you because you know that people are intentionally trying to bring you down because they're in a low point in their life? I didn't know the answer. Not for a few years after leaving that place. But after working hard in college, earning my degree, and starting my first full-time job as a manager in a tire factory, and then working there for almost two years, that was when I knew the answer. Just keep in mind, I was way more intense with this than anything I've ever done in my life. I was extremely passionate, and I gave all of myself to that place. And it was all for nothing. At least that's what it felt like, because not even two weeks in, the comments already started circulating. He's young. He's only 21. I got shoes older than him. Really? They picked him? He's going to be our manager? Him? But at that point, I was so secure and confident in myself that no negative comment could bruise my ego. That was until this happened. Day after day, it was always something different. I was constantly sandwiched between the criticism and harsh words of those above me and below me. Reggie, what were you thinking? You messed it up again. This was your fault. Gosh, man, bro, who trains you? You won't last three more months here. I can't believe they let you in this place. Bro, you know no one takes you serious, right? You're only 21. They, they got kids older than you. You know what they do when you tell them what to do? They all get together in the break room and they laugh at you. So I responded with this. Oh, yeah? So what do their kids do? The ones that are so much older than me. What do they do? Well, uh... Not much, really. I mean, they haven't gotten their lives together yet. A lot of them still live with their parents. So I said this. Exactly. Then I walked away. Cold. See, on the surface, nothing bothered me and I was tough as nails. But all I could think about was this. Man, I went to college to better myself and become more competitive on the job market. I've impressed some of the most brilliant minds in the field of engineering and in technology. Just to graduate, get my first job, and be made out as some stupid kid who just graduated who knows absolutely nothing? Just to not be taken serious because of my age? At that moment, I could only think about 50-something of my direct reports just laughing at me, making fun of my voice, my tenacity, like, who does he think he is? I've been out here 20-something years, and so now this wet behind the years boy is supposed to come here and show me the way? And just that thought alone messed my mind up, bro. Had me out here second guessing myself and it created a sea of internal battles that I mostly had to fight alone. And to be honest with you, I wasn't ready for all of that. And I usually don't talk about this, but on top of all the scrutiny that I was facing, I was also scrutinizing myself, beating myself up for every mistake, no matter how big or small. Then I felt stupid because I remembered back to a time where I used to pray for that job opportunity that I had right then, which obviously wasn't going well, so I felt as if I was praying for misery and got it tenfold. Let me tell you something about misery. It's the greatest distraction that I've ever faced. It caused a lapse in my memory to the point I forgot who I was. I wasn't Reggie anymore. I was just a person. A person who was going through autopilot at all times just because I had to. I didn't look forward to waking up the next day. I didn't look forward to being at work. Because I knew it would be something I didn't do. Something I messed up. Or something bad enough to make the boss say, do it again and you're out of here. He loved saying that. And eventually, bro, I, I just shut down. At first... I felt that I needed to prove to myself that I could do anything I set my mind to. 
At that time, that just meant proving to myself that I could take on the automotive industry, running a very complex process and being the youngest one to do it. That quickly turned into me proving to myself that I could just survive. And that's where the autopilot mode came in. That turned into me just feeling like I had to prove to myself that I could just survive. And that's where the autopilot mode came in. Except no one around me even knew that I was in autopilot mode. No one except for my mentor. One day he sat me down for what I thought was an emergency meeting. And what he said to me made me think he could read my mind. He said, Reggie, your job doesn't define you. As obvious as that sounds, that's something a lot of people don't think about. And I definitely didn't think about it. And I didn't realize for that whole time I was doing just that. I was letting my job define who I was. He said, when you define yourself by your job, you're directly tying your self-worth to it. So now, everything you do revolves around your work. That's all you ever think about. That's all you ever talk about. That's all there is to you, is what you do in your work. What kind of life is that? I'll tell you what kind of life that is. A life that you're living based on what others think about you. A life where you forget who you are, to the point where you go home and you're looking in the mirror, only you don't know who you're looking at. And you start to ask yourself questions that you don't have the answer to. And those questions are the most important ones to ask yourself. And those are questions about your character, your purpose, your values. Reggie, you've got to wake up and answer those questions because right now, you're off track from where you told me you wanted to be. That's what he said. So that made me think about the question I asked myself years earlier. You know, the one about why the comments were getting to me. Was it because there was some truth to them? Or was it because I knew people were intentionally trying to bring me down? The answer was both. I knew I didn't have it all together. I knew I wasn't perfect. I, I knew I made tons of mistakes. And that was why I always sought after improvements, feedback, and guidance. But despite all of that, I still kept falling short in certain areas. And I knew that despite my efforts, people still had something to say. And one thing that has always gotten to me is putting 100% of my effort into something and still not being appreciated. So once I woke up from the trance I was in, I took action and the rest is history. And waking up was realizing, wait a minute, I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm a son, a brother, a friend, a good friend, an honest person. Someone who genuinely wants to help others. A content creator. I realized if you take away my job right now, I have all of that and more to fall back on. That came full circle when I quit that job a few years later and moved out of state. I already had a couple friends out here where I live now, so as soon as I landed, I pretty much got invited to a Super Bowl party. And I went with this girl who I was interested in at the time. So we're all chilling. There's about 16 of us there. There's a bunch of girls and guys there. There was music playing in the background. The game was on. People were playing little games here and there on, in the background. It was pretty chill at first. So as I'm watching the game, all I'm hearing is gossip. Like, pretend you're the game and the gossip is happening over here. This is how I was eyeing them like this. I was like... Yeah, she sucks at her job. I can't believe she got that position. She must have slept with her supervisor. She's so scandalous. I can't stand her. Oh, sorry, Reggie. And bro, everyone in that house was like that, including the girl I went with. I have since lost interest in said girl. So this gives me a message for you. Some people only have their occupation. They become so career driven and so career focused that they start to forget who they are to the point where they actually define others by how good they are at their job. And they do the same thing for themselves. And the sad thing is all they talk about is work and all they hang around is coworkers. And I'm not saying that that lifestyle is unacceptable, but I am saying that that's a lifestyle that I refuse to live. There is so much more to me than what I do at work. I am so much more valuable and meaningful than what I do in my occupation. And I just want others to wake up and realize the same thing before they become the way I was, stuck on autopilot. Except for them, it might not be a few months like it was for me. It could be a few years, maybe even decades. Your job does not define you. And I hope this video helps you realize that. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this video if you like it. Let a friend know. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.